Okay, regular viewers, we're back. Thank you again for all the support. I truly appreciate it. Today, we're kind of going to get back to basics, seeing as it's cooled off. It is only 90 degrees out in the regular shop today. So, I mean, it is super cold out. Um, so today, we're going to, like I said, get back to basics, kind of like on the first video. This is going to be a simple uh, two-part plaster mold, and we're going to use our friend... Plaster, plaster Paris. Paris. By... Dap. By Dap. Close. Close. <laughs> so, yes, uh, two-part plaster mold from Plaster of Paris because uh, it's the cheapest, easiest, simplest way to make soft plastic injection molds uh, for your for the money. So today, specifically, we are going to make a mold out of shrimps. Shrimpy. There are all sorts of different kinds of shrimps that people like to buy and use. It is uh, getting that time of year uh, towards the fall here uh, when the shrimps fill up at the bayous and all the fish that you want to catch. Uh, want to eat them as well. Um, these are some different kinds that I have here. I got an old package of the DOAs that look like they've been through uh, the ringer. Uh, these are, uh, I think, a Wally Mart brand. Uh, this one we got off of the Amazons. And uh, we tried out this Z-Man one with the unbreakable plastics. And uh, this one I found on the side of the freeway. So that shouldn't surprise anybody. But I found this bag on the side of the road. And uh, I got these old school shrimp tails out of it. So... Uh, which one do you like the best? I like this one. Why is that? Colorful. Because it's colorful. Which one do you like the best? This one because it was quick, dirty, and cheap. Quick, dirty, and cheap. Look at that. Someone's been listening to the regular grandfather there. And uh, this is one of my favorites here. Um, but, you know, again, it's expensive. And um, we're trying to find the cheapest way to do stuff. Right, guys? Yes, yes sir. That's right. Because we don't want to what? We don't spend want to spend a money. Don't spend big money on shrimps. Big money on little shrimps. Okay. <laughs> so I like this one, and I like this kind of style because this is a uh, weedless hook in here. Not that I have a lot of weeds where I fish, but there is a lot of sticks and rocks and other things like that. So, um, you know, this is, a, this is a pretty good style right here. Um, the DOA one is nice and light, but again, these, these can be pretty pricey. So I think we can do better. So that mold that we're going to try today two-part injection mold is going to look something like this. This is a uh, shrimp that I've used for a while and I can't find any more of them and uh, it's a uh, what is it a high tide but what I saw with the characteristics of this and why I'm going to make a two-part mold of this one it's only got the little leggies on one side kind of like right down the middle so we can split that in twain um, and uh, even though it's detailed it's still simple enough that I think we can get a mold out of it and it'll come out nice. Uh, I was able to fit six of them in here. Uh, how do you say that in Spanish? Seis. 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 We're trying to learn Spanish here. So anyway, uh, we can fit six shrimp in this mold, which I think is a cocktail, um, and uh, one paintbrush lure. So uh, this is loosely how we're going to lay it out. Like I said before, you know, it's important to try and lay these out ahead of time to see how it's going to look in there and how you're going to configure it and then we'll put some locators in and around it and amongst it and so we'll get a free paintbrush lure for every six shrimp because it's shrimp season here in the regular shop but it sounds like a bad commercial for outback steakhouse right uh i don't know say that. crikey crikey say crikey crikey yes <laughs> okay so yeah here is shrimp season here in the regular shop and uh, I think we're going to make exactly what it is we're looking for with the shrimp right here. A nice, subtle shrimp presentation that we can use a single weighted hook on um, and still have it uh, be weedless. It's going to be embedded in there just like the one that I showed you before. So uh, let's get cracking. Okay. So it's everyone's favorite time. It's mold making time. So we're going to take these here parts and pieces out of this. Put them over here off camera and uh, the regular assistant is going to slather this with what petroleum jelly petroleum jelly and, and what kind of mold is this going to be a dap plaster paris plaster mold two-part two plaster, plaster injection mold and the method we're going to use today is grandpa's method which is quick dirty and cheap all right okay so we have our cups of water and today we have a new piece of technology in the regular shop. That's right, man. We're growing. We're expanding. Yeah, this stuff is not amateur anymore. This is the Plaster Agitator 5000. Or it's a Ryobi drill 
with a random piece of plastic thing that I found in the shop. It's probably more the second one. But we're going to call it the Agitator 5000 because that sounds cool. All right. Well ventilated shop. Put on a mask. Don't breathe in. Don't breathe out. Somehow survive. We're going to try out the new Agitator 5000. Wow. Look at that. I mean, I don't know how it worked, but I'm agitated. That's a bad joke, sorry. And this is a big mold, so we need a full cup. And I don't mean like a measuring cup like you're baking cookies, like a full cup, whatever cup this is. Well, I don't know if the Agitator 5000 is going to make it. They're uh, regular viewers. In my mind, it was going to work better than it is, so uh, you're fired. Back to the old Agitator 100, also known as a very used butter knife. Man, sometimes you just can't get away from the simple things. Look at how much nicer that is. We want a full cup of this stuff, so we're going to fill it right up to the tippity top. Uh, regular viewers, it's important to watch when you're pouring and not get distracted and checking on the regular assistant because uh, you will fill it up almost too much, like I just did there. Rookie mistake. Hate to see it. But we'll make it work. You got all the corners in there there, buddy? Yes, sir. Really thick on there? Thick on the corners? Yes, sir. I tried my best. Why don't you put a little more in these corners here? It's okay if it's like uh, kind of up in it because that's what keeps it from, kind of seals it. Remember, it keeps it from leaking. Oh. Yeah, that's why we use that stuff, not just for funsies. Okay, we're going to get all this uh, plaster lined out. We'll so we've got it all mixed up. We've got our mold set. Whammo. There it is. And we use our low-tech butter knife. Get all that ooey gooey plaster in our mold. Waste not, want not. Okay, there, regular assistant. Yes, sir. Okay, I think that was OCD enough. Uh, take this, please, and go wash that out for me. Okay, so we're going to level this. Again, uh, this is a homemade mold here, and I uh, expertly engineered it if you believe that, so that it can rock to self-level, okay? That was an absolute design masterpiece, not just happenstance. And another trick we have uh, is our air compressor, which is over here. I point to it like you can see it. Um, you just turn that air compressor on, let it sit on it for a second, and the vibration helps uh, get all the bubbles out. So we're going to take care of that. So uh, we've agitated it um, on, we're using agitation a lot today. I must be agitated. Um, we, we put it over here on the, um, what is that thing? Yeah, regular air compressor. air compressor. That's the word in American. Okay. Uh, yeah, we put it on the air compressor and that vibrated out most of all the bubbles. But if any do pop up, one of the regular viewers sent me an awesome comment, not even a regular comment. It was an awesome comment, a uh, suggestion just to say, you know, you can use a brush to brush out your bubbles that you may have so that works really well Go rinse that for me please yes sir so we are going to i don't know why i want it that way but i really do so we're going to put in our sprue up top here like that then we're going to take our fish paintbrush lure and lay that right down into the soup and start to lay out our shrimps. So I have let this get a little harder than I normally do when I'm putting these in. If you have a detailed uh, lure or whatever it is you're trying to make a mold of, 
a little more detailed um, and you get it just a little bit harder then you can sometimes press it in a little nicer and it will move around a little less so like with these tails for example Now the trick is going to be arranging these in one shot so that they're not in the wrong place. And that is going to be a difficult task, let me tell you, because it took me a while to get it right for the initial shot that you saw. And I highly doubt that I'm going to do it as well this time. Now some of my more astute viewers may have noticed that this shrimp right here is not touching our paintbrush lure. And good on you and a great eye, good teamwork, but it's going to be okay. We will all survive because in the mold, once we're done, we're going to be able to carve in a little bit of channels hither and thither and make it uh, so that the plastic will flow through all of these. So that's okay. We'll try and scoot it in a skosh. All right, now I need my, thank you so much. Regular assistant over here is right on the ball. Put in some locators. And again, these help your mold from shifting around. Thank you. Put one there. And then we'll put one here. Okay. Let me see a couple more. We got a whole bunch. Okay. Put one here and here and there. So this mold is getting hard nicely. So everything is as it should be. I think we're going to do okay. We'll see here though. So we're going to try and make sure these little shrimp tails are stood up as much as possible, nice and straight. So all we do now is we just let this set and, um, and then we're going to come back and show you how to make a part de or two. Or how do you say it in Spanish? Dos. Dos. That's what the language we're trying to learn. Our mold is set up. Nice and hard. Uh, luckily, it's a you know pretty pretty uh, non-humid day out with some bright sun. So we set that in the sun and it's set up even faster, which is great. So we're going to first off take our mold locators out. And uh, luckily, I have used and abused this all that it's got a little bit of a bend on the end, which works as a nice little hook to uh, just pop these guys right out of the mold like that. Sort of. As I brag about it, now it's stuck. Look at that. There it goes. Okay. Just kidding, everybody. I knew what I was doing all the time. There we go. Beautiful. Take those locators out. And now we have this nice shape that the plaster is going to settle into and create these little punch, uh, these little punch outs and fit right back into those. So thank you. And again, if you've never watched these videos before, uh, these little marbles, you can find these in your children's marble set in their room when they're not at home. Or usually just on the mess on the floor that they didn't clean up. So, so you're helping your family by cleaning up by putting these out in your regular workshop. Next, we're going to take our friend Petroleum Jelly. And we are going to slather a generous coating of uh, that as a act as, to act as a mold release. Having a lot of trouble with the English language today. So... Start in the corners, and because this mold is warm from sitting in the sun, it's actually going to help us apply this stuff a little nicer. And again, you can see none of this stuff is all touching or lined up, but it's okay. Plaster of Paris is extremely user-friendly, and we're able to carve it. So we're going to be able to carve in little channels into this. These uh, brush strokes that you're going to see from the petroleum jelly will show up in the other half so when you, if you paint over your lure like this like i just did to act again as that mold release you will see a bit of brush strokeage in there however for the type of fishing that i do my fish are not fancy enough i guess where i live to notice brush strokes so it's okay i can all take a breath and move forward i'm just joking with you guys but it doesn't really matter, though, is what the point I'm getting at. The, uh, the need for mold release outweighs the need for a perfectly smooth fish or shrimp. And if you clear dip it, like I do a lot of clear dipping, clear dipping hides a lot of these uh, 
sins, as it were. But I could stop talking right now and ask the regular editor for a musical interlude to soothe your soul. Regular editor, please cue the music. Okay, so we have slathered on uh, copious amounts of petroleum jelly, and we are going to move on to the next step, which is uh, making the plaster for the other half. We take our scientific, uh, scientifically sized cups, and we may have to open up a whole new can of, of DAP today, which is just an always an exciting time. That dog is empty, so we're going to we got a fresh one. I always like this. Open on the other end first. Yes, sir. Will do. I think that's pretty good. So, again, using a technique given to me by a regular viewer, I'm going to pour in just a little layer of it. Take our plastering brush. Try to br brush out any of the bubbles. Okay, so we're just going to rock it back and forth a little bit. Um, get the rest of these bubbles out. And we'll be back when that's all settled. And, uh, and you always want to make sure if you're going to reuse, reduce, recycle, and replay this stuff here, you got to wash it out before all that plaster hardens in there too. Okay, so our mold is back. It has dried in the sun and we're going to unbox it. Uh, we're not going to split it yet. Uh, we're just going to unbox it and let it dry further. This is a complicated mold, mold, so I am just a little nervous about uh, how it's going to come apart uh, and that it doesn't come apart when it comes apart, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yes. That doesn't make sense, but thank you for being so helpful. Okay, so my regular assistant over here is going to run the screw gun. Screw gun. Oh, we need the magnet. I always forget the magnet. Magnet. Nice and slow. Slow, oh. nice and oh. slow. Easy, easy on the trigger pull. There you go. Thank you. Much better. Next. You gain the speed. It's harder than me to aim. Good job. Next. Good. Next. Oh, slow down. Push it in hard. There you go. Good Edgy job. Girl. Okay, now the bottom. Is it made in America? Made in America, that's right. I remember. It was in the last video. The last one? Mm -hmm. Well, we made it right here in this very shop, which is in America. So that's the truth, right? Yes, sir. You want to do that part for me mm -hmm. here? Okay. okay. Give it a magnet. That's because it's a magnet. Okay, a little more. Only 26 more to go. Daddy. Just twist it. There you go. Thank you. And last, but certainly not least. Ta da! Da 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 da! <laughs> Star Spangled Banner. Okay, there we go. Made in America. Okay, so like I said, we're just going to let this guy sit. Feel how warm it got. Ooh, that's hot. No, it's well, not that's hot. Smooth it's, warm. A little. it's smooth. Okay, we're going to let it sit. We're going to let it dry some more before we try and open it up. Uh, it is fragile. Fragile. Because uh, that's Italian. But no, it's fragile um, in this state right here. When it gets a little harder, um, then, then I feel a little more confident trying to maneuver it. Now, if I were trying to pull it apart right now, it could uh, experience Break some cracking. Crack. Yes, and then we would have some heartbreak of our own after all our hard work. So we'll be back, regular viewers. Okay, sorry for the wind noise here, but uh, I had to film this because uh, I was going to set this up as a big block out here on the uh, drying rack, also known as the barbecue grill, when it just kind of fell apart on me. That's never happened before. But i got to say, I'm impressed with the detail. It came out really nice. 
So uh, I didn't even remove these little fishes and shrimps for you just so you guys could see it. It just, like I said, I put it down and the top came right off in my hand. I was just glad I didn't drop it. It really surprised me. So we're going to remove all these little shrimpids. Just like that, they just peel right out. I'm trying to do this outside impromptu with one hand. Good planning. We're going to work on this guy after it dries a little bit. I'm really afraid that I will uh, break this mold apart, but that is some nice detail in a plaster mold. Don't let the naysayers tell you that you can't do it. It can be done. Our uh, shrimp mold has had plenty of time to dry. I'll show you what we got. I was extremely pleased with how this came out. Um, I usually like it like that. Let's see if we can't get it in the middle for you guys to look at. The detail was unprecedented. It's probably the best one I've ever had. Um, I think it's, I, if I had to guess, I let this plaster set up longer than I normally would have. Um, I'm usually pressing those lures down in it when it's still uh, rather liquidy. This one was almost to the point that it was hard, almost to the point that it was not manip uh, unable to manipulate. I can say that really easily. Um, this is the side, the first side right here, and you can just, I don't know if we can see that detail. Very sharp corners and everything like that. I'm very excited to see when we pour this mold how it's going to come out. Uh, the other half, not as detailed, but not bad. Uh, you can still see this one up here was probably the least uh, detailed here, but um, we still get some pretty good corners on it. These uh, First time I've tried to make a mold of something that detailed as a shrimp. So we got to get this guy out. I, I didn't even try to take that one out yet. Um, I'm going to need to use our friend all. And if I was professional, I would have had him ready. Everybody say hi all. Hi all. There you go. Good job. All right. And then after we take that out, we're going to have to carve some channels uh, so that the soft plastic can get into all these voids here. So let's start that process now. Why don't we ask the regular editor to cue some music for this? Regular editor, cue the music. Thank you. Okay, so we are all carved out here. We have all our little voids, uh, channels cut, and um, so now we're gonna try and microwave some soft plastic and shoot the mold and see what we get. So, one thing I forgot to check is to make sure this guy fits. Good, nice tight fit in there. That's exactly what you want. So that way it uh, seals itself. So, there's kinda, Press it in, twist it around a little bit. We're gonna have to clean that out because it moved it in there. A little bit of dust, we'll just get that out of there. Clean that guy off as well. So let's look at that again, now that it's cleaned up. So we've got three holes in there, the main body, and then the first two top shrimp. So the one will shoot down there and then through to the rest of them. And then the left and right there will go to those little guys. I don't know if you can see that down in there or not uh, we'll have to see <laughs> later on if that was a worthwhile shot or a waste of your time so <clears throat> as always I start out with petroleum jelly on these um, I've got a couple questions about permanent mold releases on these uh, using paint or, or other things I use this stuff the petroleum jelly at first um, just to see if the mold works or rather than wasting that step of uh, trying to seal the mold uh, completely because sometimes I want to tweak it a little bit carve it a little more sometimes it doesn't work altogether and uh, we'll find out if it's gonna be one of those times if you uh, go and paint it then that's just something else you got to scrape off it to, to change it and adjust it 
So this does take extra time to do this at first, but it works well. Once you like the mold, once, you, once you're satisfied with it, that's when I will apply like a polyurethane or a paint to it. So I have applied paint in the past. I used like an epoxy enamel paint, but I found that it didn't stand up to the heat as well, uh, which is odd, you know, because they paint things like ovens with that. <laughs> but um, I don't know what to tell you. It just, I don't know if it's the plaster it didn't like sticking to, but if I shot the mold like, you know, several times in a row, uh, that paint would heat up and then start to peel off. So the thing I found was the most versatile, heat resistant, and uh, effective, again, was that polyurethane. There's a lot going on in this mold. It'll be interesting to see if, look at that big glob of snot. Holy smoke, sorry. <laughs> it's gonna be important on this mold to get this uh, petroleum jelly in all of these little voids here. It's good to go over and outside as well. So if you have flashing, that doesn't stick, and you can get that off. I know this takes a lot of time, especially on a mold this, uh, with this many nooks and crannies, like a Thomas's English muffin, but if you don't put in this time now, you're going to be regretting it later when your soft plastic sticks to the mold to the point you can't get it out without breaking the mold. So sometimes it is worth the pain and aggravation up front to have a better uh, product at the end. Because the, plast uh, the plastisol is oil-based, of course, um, it mixes really well with the petroleum jelly. Doesn't seem to mess with the consistency or anything like that. Doesn't react with it. Doesn't ruin the colors or anything like that. So, or at least I haven't seen any negative effects. So this one has these tails. It's very important to make sure that you have plenty of it down in those tails so that that will come out of there as well. Those are sometimes the spots where you're gonna have the most difficulty. Okay, I think we got it. Let's get that plastic hot and see what we got. Okay, so I have no clue if that worked or not. Um, the first time you shoot one of these homemade molds here, you know, you got to get used to uh, how much pressure you need, how much plastic it's going to take. So when you're using your, when you're using your injector, you know, get used to how far that plunger is going to go down before you're actually at the bottom of the mold here. Uh, you know, if you overpressurize it, you know, you get a lot of flashing, it squirts out. Um, if you under pressurize it, obviously it doesn't fill the entire mold. So uh, we'll see how we did here. Uh, I have no clue. Like I said, this is a pretty complicated mold. So it may take us three or four shots before we actually get it right. So we'll be back after it's cooled. All right. So we are cooled down, I think, enough. You can see it's drawn down quite a lot there. So let's uh, take the clamps off and see how we did. Okay, not bad. Not bad at all. We got a lot of flashing around here, but our friend Scissors can take care of that, no problem. But we filled everything up here. Looks like we got some tails. Let's see if we can get this one of these guys out of here. Hot dog. This isn't even really cleaned up, guys. This is just straight out of the mold. It's still a little warm. That is a shrimpy looking shrimp to me. And the color's not bad either. It's kind of a nothing color, but when you think about it, uh, so are shrimp. So we're gonna trim this up a little bit and uh, make it look a little better. All right, so I'm gonna trim these shrimp up and we'll be right back. I'll show you what the finished product looked like. Here's our second run. A regular guy tried to get a little fancy on you. We'll see if it worked out or not. Okay, yes, I did try to put some stripes <laughs> in it. I am not the uh, world's worst uh, fisherman. Apparently I'm the world's worst bait pourer. Uh, if you wanna see great layering and pattering, check out uh, the world's worst fishing. He will uh, definitely show you better looking than that. Uh, but it was worth a shot. It was fun to try and uh, I'll keep doing it. Uh, these top two here didn't come out great this time. Um, I didn't hold pressure long enough. I felt it as soon as I lifted the, uh, the plunger out there. But we do have four down here that are going to be acceptable. So that's great. Comes right out again. All right, guys. Break out the cocktail sauce. We got some shrimps here. So this mold 
can't believe how well it worked. I've had, like I said before, I haven't made a mold this complicated, but with our friend Dat Plaster of Paris and a little bit of patience, we were able to do this and we got some great results. Plus we got two bonus paddle tail fish here. Uh, using that as a sprue rather than just a, a stick or something like that. So the, uh, this mold is a go. We're going to um, go to the next step of it here, uh, which is I'm just going to take a coat of polyurethane and, or take some polyurethane and go over, coat the whole thing, give it a nice smooth coat. The lures that you'll get after that will be a little bit shinier, uh, like they came out of an aluminum mold. So uh, just ignore the attempted fanciness over here. Um, these will still work. Uh, the bass or hopefully redfish and maybe some trouts won't notice. So, uh, but what I was going to show you guys is how I'm going to, how I am going to rig these. You can of course rig these on a regular jig head, use them under a popping cork if you want to do that and flip them up to, uh, you know, banks and, you know, on, on uh, those kinds of things. I fish, like I said, a lot of bayous here and, um, fishing a lot of shallow flats or edges of flats and things. So I, uh, a lot of the lures I'm using are, are fairly lightweight or weightless altogether. So this is a, um, corkscrew hook with a with a very light weight at the bottom I believe that was a uh, quarter ounce it's a screw lock hook holds it in there really well measure out where that hook is gonna go poke them through and then now uh, pull on it and do a little text bows just to get the tip of the hook right in there and that shrimp is ready to go and it'll fall through the water little tail will kind of wiggle 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 as he falls down we got our little legs down here and um, generally with this kind of setup it'll sit up when it hits the bottom in the mud um, it'll kind of skip nicely as well so you can skip it up under those trees and uh, falling down things and bushes and that sort of stuff and then uh, over here we've got our weightless hook and again, that's for fishing the real shallow uh, marsh edges and things like that. Uh, sometimes early in the morning, you know, the areas I fish, those redfish will be right up against the grass edge uh, with their backs out of the water. And it's pretty fun to see them like that. Um, there we go. Measure that out. So having something that hits the water really quietly doesn't make a lot of commotion. Look at that one did it all on its own. How nice. Perfect. All right. So there's that and there's that. And again, you know, um, a shrimp style lure is a really popular lure. Uh, the soft plastic versions of them are very expensive. Um, if anybody out there watches, uh, anybody out there, he's got a ton of subscribers. So MDLR Fishing, uh, he fishes the uh, upper Texas Gulf Coast. He we just did an episode uh, just the other day. I'll, I'll put a link to his channel down in the... Well, I'll, I will politely and respectfully ask the regular editor to put a link to his channel down in the description below. I guess that's down this way here um, for his channel. If you haven't seen that episode, uh, he's fishing on the jetties, but he talks about just how expensive some of the shrimp are that he uses. So for uh, about $4 and change, we were able to get this Dat Plaster of Paris. And this color here is used leftover plastic that I've made uh, several, several <laughs> different plastics out of um, and uh, cut up and reused again. So uh, pennies on the dollar for this, people, rather than having to go buy them. Yeah, these aren't perfect like the ones from China, but uh, I made them myself. They look like shrimp. Um, I don't think they'll taste like shrimp. I'll, I'll leave that to you. But... Um, but they will work. They'll swim just like the other kinds of shrimp lures out there. Guarantee I'll catch a fish on them. So I'm hoping I'm going to be able to get out in the boat here in the next couple days. And if I actually catch a fish this time, <laughs> I'll try and show you some of that on these guys here. So, all right. Thank you so much to everybody. I appreciate all the support, all the likes and subscribes and the comments. I got some other videos coming based on your suggestions. Uh, from the Moss Boss one, somebody wanted to see me make uh, the, the gl uh, glitter lure. So I'm going to show you how I coat a uh, lure with glitter. So you got that video coming up here soon. I'm going to do a little bit more airbrushing on some hard body lures and maybe make some more different hard body lures. So again, thank you so much for the support, guys. If you have any questions, um, 
please feel free to ask them in the comments and the email address is at the end of the video i guess the end of the video it must be that way um, if you want to send me pictures of any lures that you've made um, feel free to send it to that their email and um, if you want to i can uh, post them at the beginning or the end of the video uh, especially if you made any uh, molds like this or, or got any instruction from any of my uh, ramblings and made any lures based on that kind of stuff. I'd just really love to see them, guys. So again, thank you very much. I hope you have a great week.